Okay, good. So um, that's where we are with regard to those transactions. Um, back to the accounts, bank statement, back to the dashboard. Okay. Now the other thing we do, of course, apart from earning income is um, we have to pay bills. And this is just basically exactly the same, but the opposite occurs in terms of what's going on in, in the software. Um, so if we want to enter a bill, um, similar situation, um, just on a practical note, if I'm in Tesco and I'm at their self-checkout, I've just put my debit card in and I've just paid for uh, some cleaning fluids, scan them in, put them on the side, get the receipt from the thing. I literally put that receipt down on the scanner. I get my, my mobile phone out. I, I take a photograph of the receipt and then I immediately share that receipt by email directly into zero and then I throw the receipt away. Um, the efficiency of using these accounting software and you know using them properly is quite remarkable. So here we've got a new bill to enter and either that bill has come through the post in which case you've got it um, here and you can enter it directly from here. If that was the case you would be encouraged to stick it through your scanner, um, email it into your software so that you can find it here. Okay. But if you didn't append a record, if you were in the old days of actually filing these pieces of paper in a, in a physical file, you wouldn't necessarily have to go through that scanning process. It would be there, you just perhaps put some kind of coding reference on it. Um, but uh, basically any invoice that comes through the post, as soon as I've scanned it into here, um, then I put it straight in the bin. Um, so in this case, we are, back to our library and this one here is a, a sales invoice similar to the one that I entered last time um, so um, and you can see them here so we've got an electricity bill that I haven't paid but I've now paid um, there which I could enter um, so I've got all of these these bills here that I can enter um, so Let's see, 237.36. Okay, so let's, let's have a go at that one and get that one in there, um, just so that you can see how easy it is. So I've seen what it is. It was that one there. So I'm going to just add that file. And you can see it's there showing up here as well. Okay, and then I just use this to enter it from. So basically it's British Gas. Okay, it was dated, well I don't have the actual invoice in front of me here because this is a reminder, um, so I'm going to have to guess the date for the purpose of this, but had they sent me the original invoice, which of course they don't, had I gone into the British Gas online website and find out what the actual date of the invoice is, I'm pretty confident that that would be um, an April invoice, so I'm just going to put the 30th of April on there. It's for gas, or is it electricity? It's for electricity. And uh, we're going to have one lot of um, $230. Cents. 67. Okay, it's suggesting an account which is wrong. Um, previously, I have made use of this account for similar gas bills, which is why it's bringing it up. And that's a good example to you here as to um, zero is trying to make life easy for you, but it's not always going to get it right. Okay, so you need to just be double checking what it is suggesting to you every time. So I just want to have gas. Now I could look through this list of all these accounts in order to find the, sorry, the electricity account. 
or I could type in electricity and it comes up like that. Okay, and then it's for a property, so 69, I could type in 69 there and it brings it up there. Okay, so approve that bill. Okay, and again, uh, I could put a date that it's been paid. Okay, I could put the bank that it was paid from, or I could just leave that blank. Okay, and that will be dealt with when we do the reconciliation of the bank. So we've entered invoices, we've entered bills. At the moment, this has debited electricity account for the profit and loss, and it's credited accounts payable account for the balance sheet. On the balance sheet, it will show that £237.67 is going to leave the bank account, is on its way out, okay, and therefore is a liability to the company. When we've reconciled it in the bank account, it will be removed from accounts payable and it will be showing as part of the bank account balance. So I'm going to come on to the chart of accounts. Uh, sorry, I'm going to come on to the reports. Um, so here are a list of all the reports under reports. There are many, many of them. Um, and then what it just shows here is the favourites. Uh, so five or six of the favourite reports that we've got here. So if we go to the profit and loss report, okay. So this brings it right up to May. I haven't finished May yet. Um, we've got lots and lots of different options as to how to view these reports. Customised options, showing date range, comparing it with previous years. And you can actually take any report and you can then customise that report um, to look the way you want that report to look every time. So there are literally endless opportunities for how you want to look at the reporting. So if we just say, let's just look at April of 2020. Um, uh, so there, okay. I don't want to compare it with anything. There we go, that's that report. Okay, and that is the profit and loss, nice and simple. Sales, agency fees as cost of sales, operating profit, and then it brings it all the way down there. I've got a loss in, uh, in, in April because my accountant did my year end and told me I had to take a remuneration, a salary uh, for 17,400, um, which is something that she tells me every year I've got to do in order to make use of my personal allowances and things like that. So in this particular month, uh, I had a, a, a large cost come in, which is not normal. Um, but as you can see here, that's a, a very straightforward profit and loss, just like we showed you in the, in the previous, in the first session. Um, now, what's great about this, more options, sort by, so I could sort it by account name, but look at this, filter by property. Okay, so if I want to see any one property, um, and let's choose, oh, Hard to choose. Um, let's try. Okay. Well, in April, um, I've not entered any expenses or anything like that on in this particular property, so it's not a very good example for you. It's only showing the sales. Let me just try another one. Um, try that one. Okay, this is slightly better here. So we've got rent of 1500 coming in on this property. The agent has taken £229. So that's in the cost of sales, which gives a gross profit here. And then in, in the month, I paid for electricity, gas, I paid mortgage interest, and I paid repairs and maintenance. So I can see that that, that particular prop, property in that month has made me this amount of money. So you can see how powerful this is and you can have within these profit and loss reports, you can have um, a date at the top and then columns for each property, you know, for one month. There's endless options with the reports. 
What's important, which is what I've said before, is that the profit and loss is always in a period, okay? There's no value in having profit and loss from the 1st of April to the 1st of April, okay? The profit and loss is always a periodic report for the period that you choose. If I then go to the balance sheet, the balance sheet is always as at a date, okay? In this case, the end of May. Well, I haven't done May yet, so I'm gonna go end of April and update that. So this is the balance sheet from the very beginning of time of this business, okay? And as you can see, don't take too much account of the numbers. Um, there might be some questions coming up, which I'm not gonna go into the detail of here, but um, you can see that just like the balance sheets that I showed you in the previous sessions, you've got your bank accounts, which are your current assets, including your petty cash account, okay? You've got the other, what we call current assets, which are, are your accounts receivable, that's money owing to you, okay? Money owing to you. So basically that's the money that you might have entered into sales, which has not yet hit the bank account at that point in time. Um, and then we look at the actual fixed assets of the business. And in this case, you can see that I have these properties, uh, they all have buildings values, and these are the fixed assets of the business, fixtures and fittings. We talked before about depreciation, so the cost of the fi fixtures and fittings was 13,000, but by now I've dripped 8,445 into the profit and loss. So that minus that is the net value of those fixtures and fittings from a book value point of view. Um, and, um, I have, um, uh, yes, some more plant and machinery and things, and a similar situation on plant and machinery there. So there's my total fixed assets. Coming on to the liabilities, you've got the amounts paid, so those payable, that's the invoices that we've sent out that we haven't got the money back in yet for, okay? Um, I do accruals, accruals are, means estimations, but they're, more than an estimation, they're an estimation where you've got paperwork to actually back up that estimation that actually says that is definitely going to happen. Um, so in this case, um, for example, uh, with one of my charities, they pay me, um, uh, this is a, sorry, a crude liability here, so it won't be that one. In this case, it will be, um, I don't know what, the exact case, I'm gonna give you an example. An example is that you have electricity and you haven't ever been billed by it, by the electricity company, but you know that you're incurring a cost in electricity every month and you haven't been billed. Um, and they won't bill you and they're having all sorts of problems with, you, with them. Um, so you need to put into your profit and loss account um, that say 200 pound a month of electricity usage. Um, so you can do that via accruals. So basically your profit and loss account will show the 200 pounds, even though there's no paperwork there at the time. And that would be shown as a liability in your balance sheet. There's 200 pounds to be paid at some point in the future. So that's what an accrual is. Um, we then have um, director's loan accounts, and I've got things called intercompany accounts. Don't worry about that. It's exactly the same as a director's loan account, uh, really. Um, it's basically um, uh, other companies or other people that are transferring money in and out of this business. Okay, so the director's loan account is the amount of money that um, the company owes the director that the director has put into the company, okay? Um, and um, then we have um, uh, non-current liabilities, which is uh, your, your mortgage loans mainly. Okay, so based on your, your assets, which are all the properties, you've got your loans here, um, and, and, and then you've got uh, your total here. And there's one question from one of the, uh, one of the people that are listening, I can't remember, I think it might be Manny, um, which said, was interested to know um, on your balance sheet, how do you actually split your different assets out into the different properties? Um, and the way that we've done that is we've just set up a separate asset account 
for each property and just named it by the property. And you could do the same with your mortgage loans. I could actually have uh, the names of the properties against that figure and have those breaking down by just having a separate account for each property as far as that's concerned. And then at the bottom, we've got the equity. The retained earnings is the uh, profits and loss accumulated since the beginning of time. Um, and that obviously would ultimately reflect itself in the, balance, in, in the bank accounts. So when you have your bank balance that's increasing over the years, then of course you need to have that reflected in your retained earnings figure, which is part of your equity there. Okay, so uh, that's the balance sheet and the profit and loss. Um, so we're gonna have a look at the chart of accounts. Um, and we're also going to have a look, well, Okay, so we're going to have a look at chart of accounts. And when you first set up a zero account, you'll see this has got all these accounts in. You can see the descriptions and everything else. Zero puts that in for you to begin with based on a standard normal tra trading business. Okay, and what you can then do is you can then um, add to it or edit them accordingly. So for example, um, you might see that I have gas here and I have water here um, and I have electricity here, but you could just have one account there called utilities. So I've chosen to split them into three. So I've set up new accounts, 444, I've set up 445 and 446 in order to, to do that. So if we had a look at the account, this is how the account looks like. It first of all says what type of account is it? Okay, is it current asset, a fixed asset, is it an overhead? Um, what number are you going to attribute to? What are you going to call it? What description should you put in there to help people know what should be put to that account? Um, and then a few other options below with VAT and whether you need to show that as a bank or not. And um, so very straightforward. Um, and when you are establishing a new account, if you've got one account that's called utilities there and you want to establish an electricity account, then you just copy it. You, you, you just literally, you go into the uh, utilities account, you say, how has that been set up? Now I'm going to set up my next account called energy in exactly the same manner so that it behaves in exactly the same manner. And you, so you can set up as many accounts as you like here. Um, and when you first set up your um, zero for the first time, you have to set up your bank accounts and things of that nature. So that's the chart of account. Um, and then I'm also going to show you tracking. And this is brilliant. This is uh, the wonderful thing about track tracking here is that you can, um, uh, you set up categories of tracking and then you set up your tracking codes within that category. So you can have as many columns as you like to track your um, expenses and so on and so forth. So you don't need to have um, a separate sales account for each of these properties you have one sales account and then it tracks them, okay? And so when you are, as I've shown you before, in the profit and loss, you can actually see your profit and loss account per property. So I'm just gonna go back and illustrate the um, value of tracking here when you enter the invoice, here it is there. So that's a, a tracking category that I've established. And then within that category, that's the drop down because we've put all of the individual properties in there. And you can actually have more than one tracking category if you want to, okay? Um, so that's a very powerful thing with Xero um, from that point of view, okay? Well, uh, looking at that, that's pretty much brought me to everything I wanted to talk about today. Uh, but there is one last thing that I want to tell you, which is really, really good stuff. Um, 
that I love about zero is that this area of reconciling the bank here, when you go to reconcile the bank, um, what you can do is you can establish something called bank rules. Now, all of these rules I have established. Okay, we have spend money rules and we have receive money rules and we have transfer rules. That's when you transfer money from one account in your company to another. And basically, what you can do if I add a new rule, okay, if I want to create a uh, receive money rule, okay. If any text field, or I could choose if the payee or the description, now we're talking about the bank statement here. So these are different columns of the bank statement. Okay, or I could say any of them. Okay, contains the reference RFX1234. Okay, um, then, the, then that means that it is, um, I know that that is going to be income from that particular person um, for that particular property. So let me bring that to a more practical example. I know that the direct debit, uh, sorry, the standing order that comes from one of my tenants always says the surname of the tenant, okay, in the description on the bank account. So if I said if any text field contains Latham or I can just just to be more precise, I could say if the payee contains Latham, okay? Interesting word contains. Equals means it's got to completely equal Latham. So if it said Latham one, two, three, four in the thing, it wouldn't work. But if it contains it, it would work, okay? So you can be more specific if you need to uh, differentiate different entries that occur, which are similar. Okay, then the contact there would be Latham and um, the uh, description would be rent. The account would be my sales account. Okay, and the property would be my Manchester property there. Okay, and then you've got, you then set the reference. You can then say, run it on all bank accounts or run the rules just on the bank account that you happen to know that that money is coming in on and then give the rule a title. Okay, I'm not going to save that. And these are all the um, rules that I have set. So there's the spend money rules, the receive money rules. Here he is, Latham. Okay, so there you are. And what that means, now that rule is established. Okay, when I go back to reconcile my bank every month, then anything with a rule, excuse me, I've just got the statement, I've reconciled all that, that's why there's nothing showing there. It's all showing reconciled here. Um, so I'm gonna use this one as an example here, where there are some things to be reconciled. Any of these with a rule attached will actually have the name of the rule in blue here. It'll have a little okay button there. And all you have to do is say, okay, that's that. Is that correct to that rule? Is that the right rule for that? Yes, it is, okay. And you can literally, 90% of the bank statement entries that I actually go when I reconcile my bank have all got okay next to them. Here, edit rule. Okay, £12.50 service charges. Lloyds Bank, that's the name of the rule. Lloyds Bank fees, yeah, that will do. I'm happy that that's Lloyds Bank's fees. Okay, um, this one particularly is a mortgage repayment, uh, a mortgage, monthly mortgage payment on 12 Castle Street. Okay, that's from the rule. The rule has, so I haven't put in any entries at all. It's just gone directly into the statement from the bank and Zero has directly said that's what it is. Okay, it's going to mortgage loans and, and, and that's the, the, the payment, the loan repayment there. Okay, so you can see how powerful it is that 90% of your uh, work 
you can automate and just do every month as far as that's concerned. Okay, we've got many up there. Um, so um, that's everything I wanted to talk to you about today. Um, the I'd, I'd like to hear from some feedback from you as to what you're currently doing. Do you currently have zero? Um, are you planning to get zero? Um, what's your situation? Because what I can then do is I can then um, get the next session prepared based on your situation. Um, what I have in mind at the moment is I will do another fly through of some more of the advanced options of zero so that you get even more of an overview of it. Um, and then after that, I would be looking for a much more interactive situation where we can actually look at the different questions that people have with regard to using Xero, um, and I can help them with that. What I don't think would be of great value is for me to go through every single process that you can do in Xero and show you how to do that, because that would be type, quite time consuming to show you, uh, but more to the point is that Xero themselves have some pretty good tutorials. So. Uh, there's probably somebody who's done that already in a much more professional way uh, from that point of view. So that's where we are. Um, that's where we are looking to finish. But um, can I take any questions um, before we do? Um, Rupert, um, on your bank account, you had a cash coding tab, um, which I don't have on mine. What, what is cash coding? Uh, is it mm, useful for anything? Uh, I did see that when I was explaining it to you. And if I'm quite honest with you, I'm just going to share the screen again, hopefully. Um, and um, so that we know what we're talking about. Uh, we have this this tab here, cash coding tab. Yeah, okay. I love that. Um, very interesting. I. To be honest, I've never looked at it. Okay. Never looked at it. Um, but it does seem to be that it's another way of inputting the account number, the property, inputting the information. Um, but no, I'm sorry. It doesn't show the bank on the left and zero on the right. And the yeah, it, it just seems to be literally showing everything that's unreconciled and enabling you to just go through that. But what it does seem to show is uh, you, you could do multiple potentially because it's got tick boxes on the left. You could potentially select a few and apply one rule. I, I don't know. Possibly. Useful. Yeah, uncheck all, just got, yeah, apply a rule. Yeah. So, yes, it, it could well be a quicker and easier way of achieving what you're doing elsewhere. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. Thank you. Any other questions? Right, okay. So it looks like this will be recorded in two parts because we had to reboot halfway through. So we'll have part one and part two. Um, and I'll get that up on the YouTube channel. Um, and uh, we will arrange for next Tuesday at midday to go through the next session. In the meantime, if you could privately send me some feedback, let me know um, what you're doing um, currently, so we can start to customize the future sessions to your needs as far as that's concerned. Brilliant. Many thanks indeed. Thanks, Rupert.